Well, good morning, Hillcrest. Uh, today we're going to continue our uh, look at the book of Proverbs, uh, particularly we're looking in chapter 2, verses uh, 9 through 15. Remember that last week, as we were looking at this, we saw that um, Solomon is giving a handful of if statements in verses 1 through 4, that, that if you receive uh, his words, if you store up his commandments, if you uh, treasure uh, these gifts that he is giving to us, um, then, in verse 5, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and the knowledge of God, uh, because the Lord is the one who gives wisdom, the Lord is the one who pours that wisdom out, and, and you will not only understand uh, then this fear of the Lord, but then you will receive uh, the, this blessing from God. God is the one who gives wisdom. And then in verse 9, we have the next then statement, and I don't think this is sort of two blessings kind of in parallel, like if you do A, then B, and also then C, but in a sense that, that verses 9 through 15 are what comes once you receive the wisdom from God, if that makes sense. So if you seek it, God will give it. When God gives it, then these verses, if that makes sense. So beginning in verse 9, if, if you receive this wisdom that God gives, verse 9, then you will understand righteousness and justice and equity, every good path. For wisdom will come into your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will watch over you. Understanding will guard you, delivering you from the way of evil, from men of perverted speech who forsake the paths of uprightness, to walk in the ways of darkness, who, who rejoice in doing evil and delight in the perverseness of evil, men whose paths are crooked, and who are devious in their ways. So again, uh, the, these are the blessings of having received wisdom from God, having stored up that wisdom that God pours out. Uh, you will understand righteousness, Solomon says. And here at the beginning, right, righteousness is um, a reflection then of God, right, that you will understand God's character. God is righteous and righteousness is a, uh, it, well, righteousness reflects him. What is righteous? Well, it is that which is most in accord with God, with his actions, with his will, with his understanding. Um, so you will understand righteousness because you are receiving instruction in that righteousness from the righteous one, uh, but also not just understanding God better, but understanding justice and equity, that is understanding how to live in God's world, how to live for his glory, how to live according to his ways. And in fact, Solomon describes these things as every good path, uh, not the wicked and the perverse path of those who reject wisdom, right? Those who forsake the path of uprightness. Those are this, descri or this describing the, the evil individuals in verses 12 through 15, but rather that you will understand what is good and right because you will receive instruction in that directly from God and his word. And so this, uh, this wisdom that we receive from God, it, uh, uh, Solomon tells us it, it comes into our heart. It is, it is a pleasant thing. It's pleasant for our soul. Uh, it watches over us. It guards us. It delivers us. Uh, from those who walk in evil paths. And one of the things uh, to think about as we look at these verses is just to think about the question, um, how does the Lord answer the Lord's Prayer? So if we pray the Lord's Prayer and we ask the Lord to, um, to you know, deliver us from temptation, uh, to deliver us from the evil one, how does God deliver us, particularly how does he deliver us from evil uh, or the evil one? Well, one of the ways to think about that is sort of this picture in my head of, you know, cartoons growing up where uh, the guy, maybe he's blindfolded or he's got a bucket over his head or something, and he's, he's walking through a construction site, and um, it's purely sort of supernatural providence that keeps him safe, right? Um, you know, as he walks along the girder, it gets lifted up, and right as he's about to step off, it passes by another, and he keeps walking. Um, I guess I'm saying more about my upbringing than 
uh, anything else, but you know, you think about those, uh, those cartoons. Is that how the Lord answers this prayer? Um, deliver us from temptation, keep us, guard us, protect us from evil. Well, uh, certainly he does. Um, he does that in many ways. He keeps uh, temptation away from us. He keeps the evil plans of wicked men away from us. Um, but that's certainly not the only way that he delivers us from evil, that he keeps us from temptation. Um, in fact, the, one of the primary ways that God delivers us from evil is by giving us his word, right? By giving us instruction and guidance and commandments in what is good and what is right. Um, he could just supernaturally, right, uh, protect us in that way, but uh, he has chosen a different path or at least another path as well, right? He does supernaturally protect us, but he also... Uh, commands us to grow in wisdom, to grow in our understanding. Um, but we can also then think about what does it mean, what does it mean to understand wisdom? What does it mean to understand, uh, to, to grow in wisdom so that we might be guarded from evil? Um, and here I think back to uh, the garden, um, the Garden of Eden, where Satan is tempting Eve to eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And in particular, um, she understands that um, as she looks at this fruit, that, that if I eat it, I will become wise. And in her mind, certainly uh, guided in this thought by Satan, but in her mind, wisdom is knowing the difference between good and evil because of our experience. In other words, how can I know what is good or bad? How can I know what is right or wrong if I don't have an experience of what is right and what is wrong? How do, I, I gotta try them both, right? I have to try Coke and Pepsi before I figure out that Coke is good and Pepsi is evil or whatever. Um, well, that may be true of soda, but it certainly isn't true of God's word, God's righteousness, that Wisdom is not knowing good and evil and therefore being able to discern between them. Wisdom is knowing the difference between good and evil. That good is good because, because God says it's good. Good is good because it reflects his character. And evil is evil because God declares it to be evil. Because it is the opposite of his character. And so then wisdom is not gained by experience, although experience does bring wisdom. That's not the primary way we are to seek wisdom. We are to seek wisdom in God's word. We are to seek wisdom from him. We are to seek wisdom by humbling ourselves, studying his word, and recognizing that he is the one who opens up the paths of righteousness, the paths of goodness, uh, every good path he opens in his word. So my prayer for us is that we would uh, not walk in the ways of wicked men who uh, have experimented and, and believe that their paths are right and good, uh, but that we would consistently come back to God and his word, learn from him, uh, and walk in his ways. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be reminded even in your own word, Lord, that you are good and gracious, that you are the giver of every good gift. Father, we come to you as James directs us. We come recognizing our lack of wisdom. We come asking, Lord, that you would pour it out. And Lord, as you pour that out, we pray that you would confirm the truth of your word, uh, that it would not only uh, come into our hearts, but Lord, it would be a delight to our soul uh, and that we would know your paths, your ways, and we would know them as good because you call them good. And we would uh, know the paths of evil as evil because you call them evil. And we would listen to you and walk as you call us to walk. We pray that you would work these things in us by the power of your spirit. And so we ask them all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you and uh, look forward to uh, seeing you this coming Lord's Day. Thanks.